So everything we've done so far has been kind of computation based. Let's actually get into some more of the kind of programming type syntax. So the first thing we want to look at is how to do for loops. So we're actually going to look at for loops a few different ways, but first let's just talk about the general syntax. So here's just the general syntax for a for loop. It starts off with for, and then you have some counter variable equals a start value to some stop value. So you can see here I've actually used the colon notation. So this for loop is going to start at 1 and go all the way up to n in increments of 1, where n I've set arbitrarily to be 20,000. So that's what the top part of the for loop looks like. For counter variable equals start colon to stop. Then inside the for loop you do whatever you want to do. Here we're going to do something kind of boring, but in general you can put something very complex here. What I'm doing in my for loop is just generating a random number, one value at a time. And then at the very end of the for loop, you have to put end to indicate the end of the for loop. And you can see MATLAB kind of groups the, the for and the end here in the editor so you can see what's going on. So that's the basic syntax of a for loop. And we'll put a breakpoint here, we'll run this, and you can see what happens. First, we start off with k equals to 1, and we generate a single random number, and we put it into the vector t18. And then we continue going, now k is 2, we generate another random number, and we put it in the second element of the vector t18, and so on. If I keep stepping, k just keeps incrementing, and all we're doing each time in this for loop is generating a random number and storing it in the vector. So that's what we're doing. And that's really all there is to for loops. For, put whatever code that you want, and then end. One point in this example I want to point out is there, there are good ways and bad ways to do for loops, and that's why I've done this for loop three different times. If I let this run, and we finish this for loop, we did this 20,000 times, we actually constructed this vector that's of length 20,000. You'll notice, though, that MATLAB has underlined it with this kind of red squiggle, and if we hover there, or uh, look at that error message, you can actually see that MATLAB is telling us that something's wrong there. It says the variable t18 appears to change size on every loop iteration. Consider pre-allocating for speed. So this little red squiggle has this associated error message with it, and MATLAB is basically telling us that that's kind of a bad way to do this for loop. What MATLAB is telling us is that it would be much better to pre-allocate this variable, and that's what we're doing here in the second for loop. Here, I just had t18, and I kind of stuffed in a value every time I came through the for loop. In for loop number two, what I'm doing is before I start the for loop, I'm going to go ahead and initialize the vector to be the appropriate length, in this case length n, where n is 20,000, and then as I come through the for loop, I'm going to populate one element at a time, but I already have all the memory pre-allocated. So not much different is happening in this for loop. The really the only difference is that I've pre-allocated space for the vector t19, and as I come through each iteration, I already have a spot to kind of stuff it in. So you can see there are the zeros. As I come through each iteration of the for loop, they are being filled in with values. Whereas up here, as I came through, the vector after two iterations was of length two, and on the third iteration, we had to create the third spot. And on the fourth iteration, we had to create the fourth spot, etc. So let me go ahead and uh, stop this, and we'll rerun this from the top, and you can see what a difference this makes. So I'm going to rerun this, and we're going to get a tick and a talk, and a tick and a talk. So we're going to get two times output to the screen. So the first time it took 0.04, and the second time it took 0.03. So it's a, definitely a little bit of a, a time saver doing it that way. Really the right way to do this, though, is just to let MATLAB do its vector operations. So this is kind of a bad way. This was actually a little bit faster. Let me run that again and see what the time difference is now. So yeah, so that's definitely a little bit faster. But the, really the right way to do this is let MATLAB do it with a vector op. So you can see this third example here, I'm calling it a quote for loop. So this isn't really a for loop. The point here is sometimes you have to do for loops. Sometimes the things that you have to do with your computations in here are very complicated and you have to have a for loop and do an iterative thing and compute things one at a time. This though, computing random numbers, is not one of those times. MATLAB has a built-in command, RAN, that can generate a vector of the length that you want with just a single command. So by calling RANDN with n comma 1, we're actually generating a length 20,000 random vector 
with just a single command. And here's where the savings really start to accumulate. You can see doing it this way was two orders of magnitude faster. So we went from 0.03 to 0 0.0003. So that's two orders of magnitude faster, a hundred times faster using this command instead of doing it in a for loop. So again, this really isn't a for loop. The point here is there's kind of bad ways to do for loops. There's, there's better ways to do for loops by initializing the memory. But if you don't have to do a for loop, if MATLAB already has a built-in vector operation to do what you need to do, do it that way and you'll save yourself a lot of time.